everybody. This is Chad Perkins from MoviesandComputers.com in part three in our four-part series on using Adobe Story. Now, we, we've looked at how to do writing in Adobe Story, but what I want to show you here is what to do after the writing is done. Some would say that's when the real work begins. Now, in the scripts area here, I have this tester document we created in the last movie. I don't want that anymore, so I'm going to select it and then go over here to the delete button on the right-hand side, and it's gone. Now, if I need to, I can go to the deleted area here and I could go and retrieve it. So it's not the end of the world if you delete something on accident. Now, let's say I want to share this screenplay with other people. That's one of the big parts of pre-production uh, when you're getting other people's feedback. You might uh, send it to a producer or a co-author or people in a writer's group that you're in or whatever. So what I could do is click on this little arrow here next to the script and I'm going to click on share. We do that, we can type in somebody's email address and we could give them different permissions. So if somebody's a co-author, that gives them the ability to make changes, to delete stuff, to do uh, any of that type of stuff. They basically have the same powers that you do. If you give somebody reviewer status, then they cannot delete material, but they can add comments. Now, if you give somebody just a reader status that says they cannot, uh, they could only read it and they could not add comments, and they can't even read the comments that are there. They're, they can only read what you've written. So once you put in somebody's email address and give them their status, you can check send email notification and click OK, and Adobe Story will automatically send them an invitation, give them instructions on how to set up an account and how to get into the file and check it out and all that kind of stuff. And permission at the time of this recording is only on a per document basis. So even if I say I have these projects with Josh, Steven, Heather, whoever, I cannot give Heather permission for an entire project to see all the character bios and scripts. I have to go in with each document individually and give her permission there. So uh, just be aware of that. So it is very secure and they're kind of erring on the side of security. So don't worry about somebody else being able to see anything else you don't want them to see that you have not specifically shared with them. Now I'm going to double click this screenplay to get into the authoring view and you'll see that no matter where the cursor is, there's a little talk bubble here on the right hand side. So no matter where we go, that's going to follow us. And basically what that's saying is that if we click that, we'll be able to add a comment. When we go back to our projects view, we can see the number of comments here on the right hand side. Likewise, if I click the authoring button, get back to the authoring view, our document's still open here, I can go to review. Uh, start tracking changes and that will allow me to see the changes that I've made. So I basically locked it. It's got a first draft and then anything else that I'm fiddling with will show up as additional changes. Now I mentioned this outline on the left hand side before and what this does is it very intelligently looks at the scene headings and every time I have a scene heading and it's formatted for a scene heading then it automatically makes a new scene for me on the left hand side. Now there's also, also these little squares here. These represent the most commonly used characters, the characters that are most frequent. Now the screenplay that we're looking at is from a short film I made called Monday the 16th. It's basically the life of uh, Jason from Friday the 13th. After a weekend of killing and destroying, then he wakes up Monday morning uh, with his ex-wife and his strange children on his doorstep and he has to babysit them all day. So he is our protagonist. So if I hang my cursor over this red square, I can see that that red square indicates Jason. And being the protagonist, it makes sense that he is in every single scene here. If I hold my cursor over the yellow squares, we see Natalie. She is a big part in the story. We see that she's not in the Jason's bathroom scene, and she's not in the piano room scene or the scene in Jason's bedroom. So at a glance, we get to see where our six most used characters are in what scene. Now, as far as pre-production, it gets deeper than that. I can go to the view menu and I can have it number scenes and shots. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on scene numbering. It automatically detects where those scenes are and numbers them for me, which is helpful. But check this out. I could also go to the view menu and check shot duration. So let's say I want to see the total running time. I could see the running time and uh, basically, you know, uh, for screenplays, one page of a screenplay equals about one minute of screen time. So I could basically see where this starts in the movie. This scene starts at about one minute and 12 seconds in. Now I could also go to view, shot duration, and go to shot duration. That tells me how actually how long that particular scene is. So it's not a 
cumulative total, it's just for that scene. So this one little scene right here, scene two, is only 10 seconds long. Now, of course, these numbers are not exact. I think the screenplay for Fellowship of the Ring was like 100 pages or something. The movie was like 20 hours long. So, again, it, there's a lot of room for leeway there, but it does help to have a rough idea of what's going on. Now, if we go up to the production dropdown, there are more tools. One of the things that's really cool is that we can create reports, breakdown reports. So I can create a report of the scenes, a report of the locations, characters, cast, all these different types of things. So say for example here, um, I have a cast report generated from this and it has all the different characters in the film. And again, it's a short film, so there's only like a handful of them. But it has uh, the total number of dialogues and number of scenes that they speak in. I also created a location report. And it says, here are all the different places in the, uh, the screenplay. And here's the scene number, shot number, the setting, time of day. I mean, this is just incredibly helpful when you're going through the planning of the shooting. Now, I should also point out that Adobe Story did what everything that Final Draft did that I loved and does it actually a little bit better. And there are also many tools out there that cost a fortune that do this kind of pre-production help. And Adobe Story at the time of this recording is a free tool. I love that. Now, one of the cool trick here, if we go to the production menu, I can go to camera shot. And if I want to, I can change the template that it's going to use and create a, a camera shot script. I could go in there and I could uh, make notes about the way I want the camera to move at a certain point in the screenplay. And even if I know I'm going to be doing visual effects, I could put in visual effects cues and notes in the script as well. Just incredible. So that wraps up this tutorial. In the next tutorial, the final tutorial in this series on using Adobe Story, we're going to be looking at what happens after this. We're going to be looking at what Adobe, Adobe Story can offer you in production and also in post-production. Again, I am Chad Perkins for MoviesAndComputers.com. Thanks for watching.